Today, we're going to talk about Angular services. A service is something that talks to our controller and helps us organize where we get our data. We have some code here that initializes an Angular application, and it's just, you know, very simple, our app.js file initializing that module. And then we have this controller here. It's just a plain old controller called main controller. We have the scope doing its stuff. And then we have our view, our index.html, and we import our main controller, our app.js, our trends, our main controller. We have everything ready to go here. And so what are we going to do? We are going to go ahead and get data from the New York Times. And in our application, we're going to show like the current top technology stories. And we're going to be able to manipulate the data, and it's going to be great. And so how do we get this data? Well, we have to go to the New York Times developer website. And so we're just going to go developer newyorktimes.com and this is going to load up a website and it has all this information about how you can use data from the New York Times. But in order to use the data, we have to get an API key. And so an API is an application programming interface and it's just how we're going to get the data from the New York Times and what that looks like in code. And then the API key is actually how we get that data. And so I get a key and then I say, hey, to the API, like, here's my key, give me the data. And then if that key is valid, then it will give me the data. And so why do we need a key? Well, let's say I wanted to hack the New York Times. Well, I could hack and I could do crazy things with their data and try to get access to things I don't have access to. But they would know it was me because when I put all of my information in here and they email me an API key, then they'll be like, oh, this is the API key that's causing all the trouble. Who is that linked to? And they'll be able to find you. And so for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm not going to be showing my API key because then you could use it and you could hack the New York Times and it would all be pinned on me and that's bad. So don't hack the New York Times. Instead, you know, create your own API key and don't share it with anyone and use it yourself to get the data that you want. But this is how you get one. You have to have the API key in order for anything to work because the New York Times wants to track who's using their API. They want to track, you know, what's the most popular. They want to see like, oh, is there a security breach? That type of stuff. And so go ahead and fill all this out. And once you fill it all out and hit submit and create API key, then you will get your own API key. Now, before you hit that create button, you're going to want to switch this to top stories v2 because that is the api we're going to be using and so the new york times has a bunch of apis but don't worry about those just worry about the top stories v2 and that's where we're going to get our top technology stories so go ahead and create that api key but i already have mine and we are going to scroll down here and we are going to check out this top stories v2 api and so I can get the top stories of home, technology, a bunch of sections, but we're going to see how this works. And so we're going to go ahead and try it out. And notice it doesn't work initially. It says invalid authentication credentials. And so right now I just have API key here. Well, once you put in your actual API key, all of this will work. And so again, this is going to be blocked out. But if you put in your own API key, it will send the request. And now we have all this data on the right. This data is in the form of a JSON object. And a JSON is just a way we can organize code and data in JavaScript. And so we have you know, a status, meaning it went through OK, a copyright, the section, in this case it's home, and a number of results. And then each of these results is an article or a story. And so it's in the briefing section. This is the title of it, you know, the abstract of it, where I could access it on the New York Times website. But notice the text, the full text of the article is not going to be in here. And that's because it is actually, you have to pay to read the New York Times. And so if they allowed people to access that full text data of the article, that would be bad because then people would be like reading it without paying. And so if you were going to hack the New York Times, that would be what you would want to get, I imagine. But um, in this case, we are not going to be worrying with that. We are just going to pull the title and abstract of each article in these results. But we need to set the section portion to home. And so we can scroll down here and we have these parameters and we can change these. And the data that is shown here will also change. And so we are going to change home to technology here. It's going to send the request again, and there we go. Now we have section technology, and 
these articles are different. We have this thing about Apple and taxes and all of that stuff that's coming out now. And you have all these different articles. You have another one here. And it's just this list of, you know, what did it say at the top? 28 articles that we'll get the data for. You could format it in another way, but we're gonna stick with JSON. And so how do we actually get this data inside of our code? Well, we're gonna create something called a service. And so we are gonna create a new file here and we're gonna call it nyt.js and we're gonna go into the JS folder and we're gonna create another folder called services. And so this is where the whole idea of a service comes in. And it's something that the controller is gonna to talk to in order to get the data. In a previous video, we did all of this inside of the controller, but to make it, you know, prettier and nicer and neater, we can put it, you know, get where we get the data from in a completely different file. And so we're going to go ahead and save that in there. And we're going to write some code in here that will initialize a service. And so we'll go app.factory. It's going to be called NYT. And then we're going to write some strange stuff here. And so this kind of sets up what the premise of a service is. We have the name of the service, we have HTTP, as we learned in the last video, this is uh, another service that we're importing as a dependency. So you have to have HTTP in order to, you know, for all of this to work. It just allows us to get data from the internet. And we're gonna use it to make a get request with from you know, some URL here that we're gonna figure out later. And if it's successful, then we'll return the data. And if it errors, we will return the error. And this whole thing will be called within the main controller. And so all we need to do is figure out what this get request is gonna be. Well, we can go back here and we have this URL. And so we can go ahead and copy this URL from the JavaScript. All of these are pretty similar. They all have this main you know, URL here. And we can go ahead and paste it inside of this. But we need something else. We need to add a parameter to this because our parameter is our API key. It's what authenticates our request. And so we can do this by just adding a little bit more. And you'll put your API key instead of key here. So whatever it ends up being, you'll put that there but I'm just gonna put key for now and then we'll switch it up when we actually run the program. Again, this get request is accessing this endpoint within the New York Times and we have to have this parameter here in order to you know, validate our request so that we can actually have access to it and that when we access it, it knows that we're a user and we've already you know, have our profile in place. So with this setup, now we can use it in our controller. And so we're gonna go ahead and import it as a dependency as well here. We'll go NYT because that's the name of this service and we'll also put it here in the function. And then to call it here, we will just go nyt.success. And so if the service is successful, if it returns the data you know, it's supposed to, then we are gonna run this function with that data and for now, we're just going to print it out in the console just to see if it returns or not. And then in our index.html, we are still going to need to import it down here. And with that imported, we can go ahead and run it in our browser. And to do that, we will just pull this thing into here. And nothing will show up as of yet because we need to inspect and see if anything was printed out in the console. And so we had some typos here. We just have to move this parenthesis here and then take away that parenthesis and then put it at the end here so that this whole thing is in the get request. And then this was just, you know, syntax error. And then we'll go ahead and refresh this, go ahead and inspect. And here in the console, we have our data. And so it was just like we saw in the console, the API you know, demo thing here. We have our technology section, our first object, and if we go to the title, it's that thing with Apple and taxes. And so this seems to be working, but we need to iterate through this data and go through it and pick out the things that we want. And so what we want to do is show the title, abstract, and maybe a link for each article. And so we'll go ahead and do that inside of our controller. And so going to our controller, we'll just change the body of this function to something else that iterates through this data.
and we'll go for i equals zero while i is less than data dot results dot length. And remember, all of our articles were in that, you know, results array back in our JSON. And so if we look at this JSON, it's all, all of these articles are in this results array. And we'll go ahead and increment i each time we go through the for loop. And then inside of here, we're going to create a variable called story. And we're going to give it a title along with some other stuff. And we give it, you know, the abstract, the URL. We're just putting it in a different type of data structure, but we're grabbing all of our data from data, the variable here. And then at the end, we're going to append it to a scope attribute called list. And so we'll do scope.list.push story. So we're pushing on each story, each article onto this, but we're only letting it carry the data we actually want. And so now we have this list attribute and it has all of these individual stories in it. So all we have to do is go back to our view, our index.html, and inside of our div here, iterate and go through all of the stories in list, the scope attribute, and show each you know, title, abstract, and URL. And so to do this, we're just gonna create a header here. And we're just gonna call it most popular stories in technology and we'll go ahead and close that tag and then inside of here we'll do a div and an ng repeat and go check out the directives video and the basics of angular video if you want more details on how to do this but we'll go story and list because list is our scope attribute and we want to see each story in it and we are going to show the story's title and then abstract and url and we'll use nghref because we're accessing something from the scope as a part of this link. So we do story.url and we'll have the text just be read. We'll have a break line between each story and there we go. Now let's go and refresh our browser and we have some errors and that is because we need to change these semicolons to commas. And then we also need to define our list up here or else it will error because it won't know what list is. Like, is that an array or whatever it is? And then we'll go ahead and refresh this. And there we go. Now we have our articles. We have Apple O's, you know, whatever to Ireland and Texas. And we can go ahead and read these articles by clicking the link here. There we go. Now we can read the article. But we also have our quick view from our own index.html that we created. That's all for now, but next time we'll talk about how to host your web page on a server with GitHub pages and make it available to everyone around the world. See you then.